In this lesson, we're going to be talking about what you should know. The things that you should have some familiarity or experience with before you attempt to undertake these lessons. And the reason for that is if you don't have some minimal amount of knowledge and experience, you may find yourself frustrated and lost as you work through some of these things. Now, I try to give a lot of background experience and knowledge and understanding of what's going on underneath, but at some level, there are just some basic things that you do need to know and understand. You need to have some basic familiarity with operating systems. We're going to be doing a lot of work with command line, not a lot of graphical user interface where everything is in front of you. You should have some basic knowledge of networking. And having some knowledge of some programming is really going to help. If you don't know how to program, you may be able to do some basic things, but you're certainly not going to be able to do the work of extending the various tools. We'll be talking about extending these tools and their usage and functionality. And you may not even be able to completely understand how the exploits work and what's really going on. So the operating systems. We'll be doing a fair amount of work with Linux. Windows, of course, is pretty common, and most of the tools, if not all of the tools that we'll be looking at, have some ability to run inside of Windows, if not running inside of Windows exclusively. Just some basics of knowing your way around and how the operating system works and where to get to different things. Having a little bit of knowledge of operating system internals always helps. And particularly as you get deeper into these types of activities, really understanding how the operating system works is really helpful to you. So we're going to be doing some command line, a lot of use of terminal inside of Linux. And we're not going to be using a lot of web interfaces for the various tools that we'd be looking at, even though there are graphical interfaces and web interfaces to some of these tools. We're going to be doing a lot of terminal work. A lot of that is just because, for me, that's kind of where I'm comfortable and that's what I prefer to do. Although there are interfaces that you can get for a lot of these tools, but just getting comfortable with command line is helpful because when it comes down to it, you can always get to a command line. You may not be able to run a graphical tool for a variety of reasons, but you can always get to a command line. Understanding networking, so TCP IP and some of the basics of TCP IP as well as ports and what layer of the OSI model that works at. Ports are TCP and UDP and it's a way of multiplexing addresses. We're going to be doing some work with ports and some different protocols in the TCP IP stack. A little bit of programming never hurts. Some good languages to know are Ruby, Python, C, and these are really helpful to be able to extend Nmap, Metasploit, and being able to write fuzzers. Knowing C, as an example, is a pretty good starting point because the structure and syntax of a lot of these other programming languages follows C. So if you understand C and how that's put together, it will really help you get into some of these other programming languages. Like Nmap, for example, uses a programming language called Lua. If you knew Ruby or Python or C, you should probably be able to pick up Lua pretty well. Metasploit uses Ruby. The fuzzers are using a combination of Ruby or Python. That's really kind of the programming languages that we're going to be looking at here, but having some knowledge of programming is certainly a good idea. Operating systems, just a limited understanding of operating systems. Again, we're going to be using a lot of command line, and primarily that's in part because that's what I'm comfortable and prefer to use, but really it has to do with the least common denominator. In a lot of cases, you may not be able to use a graphical interface for one reason or another, but the command line is always going to be available to you. Networking is good to know. Programming is always good to have a little bit of experience with. And those are really the things that you should probably know before we jump into all of these lessons.